Okay, so uh, today we would be uh, doing two stations on uh, labor ward prioritization. This was on popular demand because labor ward prioritization is a station that comes every exam, almost every exam. And these are one of the more difficult stations to handle. And if, with the 10 minutes time constraint, it gets even difficult, even more difficult. So uh, basically I would like to give you certain tips and to help you uh, to go about doing these stations in a smooth manner and with a calm mind, that is what is required before you attempt doing the stations. All right, so uh, let's do the first station. Can we have uh, Dr. Aisha for the first station? Hi, yes, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, hi. Okay, so I would be yeah, putting up your station and I would give you your two minutes time, right? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, next page, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, next page, please. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see the next page? Yes, ma'am, I'm able to. Okay. Yeah, you can start. Okay. Hello, I'm Aisha Sadhika, one of the exam candidates. I've read the instructions and I'm ready for the structured discussion. Okay, so can you prioritize the cases and assign tasks to your team and tell us what your immediate action is going to be in each of the cases? Okay, sure, ma'am. Here I have a labor board with 11 cases. Um, labor board is dynamic, so my priorities might change at any moment. And I'll be going uh, with the priority wise, uh, taking my urgent cases first. Urgent cases being room number two, 10 and 11 for me. Coming to room number two, here is uh, a woman. She's in labor. Uh, and uh, here she's uh, the midwife. Is, there's a she's having pinkish liquor and CTG is attached. In this case, I would like to know how far along in labor is she? Her abdominal findings, her vaginal findings, at the same time her CTG findings, ma'am. Here is the CTG. Can you see it? Ah, yeah, ma'am. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma okay, ma'am. Uh, and, and her vaginal findings, ma'am. Per, per abdomen, per vaginal findings, as such. Oh, no further information. Okay, ma'am. And uh, is she being given any form of oxytocin? Yeah. A anything? As no such? further information. 
okay ma'am okay so no, here the ctg is okay ma'am ctg appears to be pathological and uh, uh, pink pinkish uh, like uh, i would uh, okay fine uh, depending on what her previous deliveries were where it is was it a cesarean section this can be a case of scar rupture as such so we need to uh, we need you might have to deliver the baby immediately in view of the ctg as well as her previous history and uh, keeping in mind the high risk records she has i'll be maybe immediately informing the consultant about this particular case and at the same time inform the neonatologist uh, about uh, the baby's outcome and the need for uh, keeping him in an icu since there's no uh, theater facility and uh, the, the woman needs to be delivered immediately we might uh, i'll be contacting the woman with regards to this deliver the baby and might we might have to transfer her uh, transfer the baby to another center after delivery so this this uh, and uh, also at this point in time if any resuscitation measures are required continuously monitor the ctg it will be a category 1 cesarean coming to the next case case number 10 here is a uh, first gravida p prom feeling unwell i would like to know with what her observations are at this point in time her abdominal findings and vaginal findings from and any her pulse is uh, 120 beats per minute and she yeah. has a temperature of 38.6 degrees and mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure is 90 by 60 mm of mercury okay ma'am and uh, is she in labor any any form of abdominal findings or anything no other findings normal? okay ctg no other findings given okay okay no. ma'am so here uh, here she, uh, she appears, it appears to be a case of uh, any leaking per vagina ma'am Okay. Yeah, you are asking so, about room ten, right? Which room are room you asking 10, about? Room number ten, yes, ma'am. Room number ten, room number ten. Yeah. P from okay. Leaking yeah. Is She's a case of so PPR. Here, yes, ma'am. So here it 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 appears to be a case of chorioamnionitis. We'll have to start her on antibiotics, uh, erythromycin four times a day. Monitor the patient. Monitor monitor the baby at the same time, uh, and inform the consultant about this. and inform the women that uh, there may be a need that we might have to deliver the baby if the infection if uh, this does not really help her and uh, there can be a need for emergency cesarean section as well and at the same time inform the neonatologist if if possible administer antenatal corticosteroid uh, counsel the woman with regard to this as well need for transfer of the baby uh, need if possible even transfer the woman in like in utero transfer the baby to another hospital at the same time to deliver the baby there since is uh, since is no cots available here in this hospital and co counsel her with regards to this next room uh, is room number 11 here she is 9 cm dilated with ctg pathological appears to be confused i would like to know how her antenatal uh, period was like with uh, with regards to appears confused what her observations are at this point in time ma'am her blood pressure is 90 by 60 mm of mercury and there's okay. no other information okay ma'am uh 90 by 60 so probably she appears to be dehydrated i, I would like to uh, okay dehydrated so i would like to start her on iv uh, ask her to uh, drink something take some fluids or even start her on iv fluids as such uh, since the ctg is pathological we might have, we will have to expedite the delivery inform the consultant with regard to this as well if and uh, take and uh, uh, transfer her to transfer her to theater and in the meanwhile uh, try uh, have a look at her vaginal findings if possible go ahead uh, if 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 in the meanwhile she dilates to 10 cm no Uh, then go ahead with uh, vaginal instrumental vaginal delivery if not possible then immediately recourse to cesarean section ma'am that's that's my last urgent room coming to the semi urgent rooms my semi urgent rooms are room number 4 and 8 i'll be going to room number 4 here is a third uh, third gravida previous uh, cesarean section for vbac 4 cm dilated here here i'll be sending my st1 uh, st3 to counsel the women with regards to what what can be anticipated they need for continuously monitoring the baby and uh, to see uh, continuous ctg monitoring and explain how what can be anticipated need for uh, need for doc, uh, expert uh, expert doctor in delivering a uh, in doing a vaginal breach delivery and also the presence of a neonatologist as advised in this station my next semi urgent and here uh, next semi urgent case is room number 8 uh, here uh, 
previous history of decreased fetal movements in pregnancy with previous stillbirth at 41 weeks. She is currently 37 weeks. I would immediately want to do her CTG and uh, check her abdominal and vaginal findings, ma'am. Ma'am, any, uh, no any information? Okay, ma'am. And if the CTG is all fine, here I'll be sending my SC2 to counsel the woman with regards to this, monitor the baby, and uh, surely after we, uh, after I'm done, uh, attach a CTG, after I'm done with uh, my urgent room, I'll come here, review the case, and we, we can start her on induction, ma'am. Uh, depending on her, the bishop scoring, we might go in for medical management or mechanical methods. Then my next semi-urgent room is room number eight. Oh. So, okay, semi, I'm done with uh, semi-urgent rooms. Now coming to the routine rooms, ma'am. Routine rooms is room number one. Uh, first gravida uh, shifted from midwifery unit requesting epidural analgesia. I would, uh, I would like to know whether what was the reason why she uh, like, was epidural the only reason why she was sh shifted to this unit. And uh, if epidural analgesia is required, then I'll uh, ask my uh, anesthetics team to get to this room and go ahead with it. Uh, with giving this woman uh, epidural analgesia after checking her blood pressure, observations, uh, abdominal findings and all. So my next uh, routine room is room number five, uh, gravid one with uncomplicated pregnancy in labor. Here, uh, this, this appears to be a routine case at 37 weeks. I would like to know what her abdominal and vaginal findings are at this point in time, ma'am. Any information, room number five? No. Okay. No. So, so here I'll be sending my midwife to monitor the woman and uh, uh, inform me if there's any need be. Room number seven, first gravida conceived with uh, IVF ICSI for elective cesarean section. Here I'll be sending my SC2 who will be going to, uh, to check the woman, to check her observations, abdominal findings, take her through the WHO checklist, take her through her consent, blood reservations, uh, blood trans a need for group uh, blood group matching and all the basic investigations. Now my next routine room is room number nine. Here it is uh, Gravida one with an SGA baby for induction of labor. I would currently uh, want to know in this case, uh, uh, in this case that uh, how the baby is doing, the CTG of the baby and, her, and the last Doppler report of the baby as such. Um, and uh, that's it ma'am. Any information with regarding to room number nine ma'am? No. Okay, so uh, after checking the CTG and uh, uh, decent scans, I'll, I'll, after completing all the rooms, probably I'll come to this room as well. Here I'll be sending my midwife to keep an eye on this woman, um, check her CTG and CTG basic observations. And after completing all the rooms, I'll come to this room for an induction of labor, ma'am, as such. And even for this room, I'll be informing my neonatologist with regarding to the SGA baby and uh, if any counseling is required and if there's a need to uh, if if the baby can be delivered here or if there's a need to uh, do an in utero transfer as such ma'am so that's uh, and the remaining room number three and six they are empty so i will just want to check whether they have been sterilized and if they are ready if in case any patient comes in that's it ma'am yeah. thank you uh, can you summarize the who's going to which room which of your staff okay, members? Ma okay, ma'am. Urgent rooms, room number two. Here in this case, uh, I'll be going. Okay. Room number two, I'll be going here, ma'am. And uh, room number four, uh, the next urgent room is room number 10. P prom, feeling unwell. I'll, I'll be sending uh, my ST3 here, ma'am. And then the next urgent room is room number 11. Dilated CTG pathological appears to be confused. Probably I'll be sending my... Uh, midwife here initially and to get back to me uh, uh, get back to me if if need be uh, after stabilizing this woman with the okay. uh, iv fluids yeah ma'am and semi urgent room room number 4 for vbac i'll be sending my sc1 here in room number 4 and uh, uh, room number 8 this is the second semi urgent case i have i'll be sending here and the midwife ma'am and uh, routine room number one case, I'll be sending my um, midwife here as well. Almost all the rooms done, ma'am. Okay, fine. Our time was up. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, good attempt, Dr. Aisha. Um, okay. The good part 
was that you picked up the urgent rooms. You were able to identify what could be urgent here. Uh, and you managed to elaborate on those urgent rooms. That is important. The reason being that those are the rooms that would have maximum weightage. That is what you did, which was good. Okay. Okay. Although uh, there were certain safety points, which you or safety points as well as uh, points that are counted under applied clinical knowledge that you would you could have touched upon in each of these rooms. Okay. okay. And what you need to realize is that it's a uh, it's imagine you need to imagine a patient in that particular situation. Okay. okay. And whatever okay. information is provided to you, that would be the limited information provided to you. You do not have the entire scenario in front of you. Think of okay. a differential diagnosis. Okay. okay. I'll tell you what okay. exactly I mean by that. Uh, okay. But overall, fine. You did a fair job, I must say. So just let me take you through what you need to do in the two minutes time and what you need to do in these cases in labor ward prioritization cases. Okay. okay so okay. first, first most important is check what domains are being assessed. Most of the time you would have uh, patient safety applied clinical knowledge is always there. We know that in all the domain, in all the stations for that matter, you would need to check if there is information gathering as well, okay? When there is information gathering as a separate domain, which is assessed, you need to emphasize on that information gathering bit as well, all right? So you need to okay. state what is the further information in each of these cases. You need not do a detailed information gathering in each of the cases, that's not possible. It, you will run out of time, but you need to specify things that you would need to know in each of those rooms. Okay. okay, that is where you are marked for on information gathering. Okay, the next domain is always communication with colleague and and it's very easy to score on communication with colleague in this station. At the same time, I would say that it is very easy to lose as well. Why? Because there are very few things that you need to say. Okay, like one is the so communication with colleague would be uh, assessing how you assign the tasks to uh, your staff. The second thing they would be assessing is whenever there are certain situations like a patient, like a preterm baby requiring delivery, whether you mention inform the neonatologist, that comes under communication with colleague. So these few points here and there, if you miss, it's very easy to miss. So if you miss, you will not get your score on communication with colleagues. So the important domains that you need to check it is important to check what domains are being assessed. Okay. Usually you will have all the four domains asked in uh, labor ward prioritization stations. Like in this case, all four domains were checked. Then read and reread the task. Okay. So of course uh, you will not have a lot of time for you to finish reading the entire uh, task in two minutes because you are stressed. Sometimes you may not grasp the uh, situation, but it's important to stay calm and read and reread. Even if you do not finish the task, reading the task in two minutes, when you go and open the station, when the 10 minutes duration starts, you can request the examiner. Is it okay if I read the station? Okay. You can request the examiner because it is very, very, very important to understand what the task is. I myself have done this. Okay, when I was answering the exam, I had requested the examiner because I couldn't finish reading all the 10 rooms. Okay, and there was a lot of information provided. Okay, and this happens particularly in the face to face exam. It may not happen in the online exam, as we have noticed that in the online exams, you may have just one liners in each of the rooms and you just have to elaborate on those rooms. That is the thing in the online exam. But here it may they may give you more information because it is easier to uh, look at multiple things in, an, in a face to face exam. So they may give you more information in a face to face exam. OK, so it's important to read the task well. Check your team. You would have a notepad with you when you are answering the on, on site that is the face to face exam. You may you will not have a notepad with you on the online exam. They would they would give you a. a a, a thing on the screen that where you need to type your notes. Okay, so uh, 
in the notepad you can just jot down who all are the colleagues but even if you don't do that that's not very important because on your table in the on site exam on the in the face to face exam on your table you would have the question paper stuck so you can always look at the team that is there with you and it's important to understand who is with you because the station may say prioritize and tell me who would you assign the task to okay that was exactly what was asked here okay and these are the most difficult of the labor ward stations where you have to prioritize assign task and and tell your immediate management okay so check your team who is there in the team because it is it uh, we have been assessing so many candidates that uh, some of the candidates uh, typically do this particular mistake if there is st2 st3 with you then they would say st4 would go to this room when there is no st4 at all in the team that's it up that is a typical mistake that happens should not happen okay then um note the time of the day now this is important okay if you check in this particular station here okay let me go back to the station it is mentioned 8 hours now what is the importance of 8 hours let me show you the station okay now what is the importance of this particular um time that is given to you okay you should be aware that this is the duty change time okay you would be changing duty at this hour usually typically 8 to 8 is the duty roster so uh at 8 am you would have a team that is going out and a team that is coming in okay so even if your consultant has not reached which is a typical thing that they mention in the station in the question you you may have the consultant of the previous duty who's on campus still okay or may have come for some some surgery or some emergency may have come on campus for something you need to if you cannot find your consultant if you think there are two emergencies or two situations where you need somebody to be with you it is always better to say that i would call the consultant if your consultant is not there the previous duty consultant very important okay when you have two emergencies going on and you cannot uh, be present in both the rooms okay so that's important all right so and that's the thing that you would need to know then so you have to check the domains you have to read the task well you have to check your team you have to check the uh, time of the day availability of the consultant so whether the consultant is there with you there already or is on the way or there may, may be a previous consultant who's there on campus so that has to be checked okay and if an icu bed is available or not again has to be checked because in such uh, stations where they say they specify that this bed is not available they may have a patient who is in preterm labor so they are checking whether you say in utero transfer or not okay so that those are the things that you may have to check ot availability whether whether there is a single ot going on or whether there are two ot's or whether nothing is mentioned if there is a single ot you have to still uh, prioritize if there are two emergencies you have to prioritize which one would go to ot first okay so that is the reason why you need to look at all these things in you can do you can you can take approximately 30 seconds to read and to grasp this information from the question the next one and a half minute you need to check your labor ward board and i would suggest you as you are reading the labor ward board you write down room number one you're reading it you're not looking into your notepad but you're writing down room number one room number two three and as you are reading you write at the side urgent non urgent semi urgent okay in that manner like in this case like the way i've showed you shown you here okay so even if you cannot manage completing this in the 2 minutes task in the 2 minutes time please ask for some more time in the station it's important it's important to understand what you are dealing with it is important to understand which are the urgent rooms and what happened here the most urgent rooms were were towards the end of the um let me show you yeah in this particular 
a labor ward board the most urgent rooms were room number yes of course two room, room number 2 was urgent most urgent and the other urgent rooms were room number 10 and 11 all right so uh it's important uh, what you, uh, would otherwise happen if you go room by room you would go from room 1 you would talk about room 1 you would take your own sweet time to talk about room 1 about the epidural analgesia blah 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 you would then go to room 2 you would elaborate then you would go to room 4 5 6 7 and when you reach room number 10 and 11 you will have just one minute left which is why it's important to first talk about those stations that have maximum weightage okay if you're comfortable going room by room it is not wrong okay i wouldn't say it's wrong it's not wrong you can go room by room then you can prioritize and then assign tasks that will take more time is what i assume because when you have already written down which are the likely urgent rooms you can see your notepad and okay these are the rooms that i would like to go first that is what you can do which you did dr aisha okay so you picked out the urgent rooms now another important thing that the rcog typically does is that they would give you subtle information here and there which would not obviously state that it is urgent okay but because of that information they are testing they are checking if you are vigilant enough as an obstetrician to make a note of that particular information that is provided to you and you act on it or you ask for more information like here dr aisha you did a very good job by picking room number 10 as urgent because it is mentioned that she is feeling unwell okay the very fact that they have given this additional information means there is something more to it otherwise they would not give you that additional information what is the point of saying somebody is feeling unwell in such a vague manner that is because this is possibly sepsis there is a possibility of sepsis so which is why they have given you additional information which is why they expect the candidate to ask for more information okay you cannot say it is urgent right away from what it appears but you may think that it is urgent because it is mentioning that the patient is feeling unwell so you need to ask for more information all right like uh, they make state um, uh, there may be situations where it is mentioned that she, there is a para paras woman and she is having high floating head and she is in labor that may there may be such situations okay why is that high floating head bit mentioned okay it may be to trigger the thought for the candidate wherein the candidate is expected to ask for more information they may tell you then that there was a uh, rupture of membranes there was leaking and there was cord prolapse so this subtle information that is provided in the station is for you to take cognizance and you to be alert okay alert enough to ask for more information based on that you can further classify the room as urgent and then accordingly proceed okay so yes this particular patient was indeed urgent she is likely to be sepsis now going back to the uh, yeah all right so now let's go to the questions the answers okay so first let's see the rooms that are um urgent room number 2 okay room number 2 you said that there is a possibility of this being rupture you said that there is a possibility of abrupt uh, no you did not say there is a possibility of abruption but there was there is a, this differential diagnosis that it could still be abruption although yes first diagnosis i have put here is rupture uterus that's because she's paras para 4 so the most common thing that can happen is rupture but you cannot rule out abruption how will you rule out abruption or how will you come to a definitive diagnosis is by examining her so then the findings which are given to you pulse of 130 beats per minute blood pressure of 90 by 60 it can still mean it's abruption or rupture okay you still need to examine so now when you have this differential in mind how do you come to a particular definitive diagnosis is by examining the patient right so you have to imagine this this is to be imagined and you what you would do in that situation in the labor ward is to be thought about so first is you would examine you would check her general condition that is the sensorium 
you would check her per abdomen and the thing that would differentiate a rupture from abruption is the feel of the abdomen okay the uterine contour whether there are contractions or there are absent contractions fetal parts are obviously palpable or not that would tell you about whether whether it is abruption or rupture per vaginal examination to be done whether there is loss of station whether there is bleeding all these things have to be looked into bedside ultrasound we can help you or can contribute to your diagnosis as well then once you have done this go in a stepwise manner once you have done this you declare to the examiner draw his attention because examiners are assessing multiple students and they may and if you keep on talking they may not even register what you're saying okay so say declare that this is an obstetric emergency and there may be bleeding right there is pulse of 130 bp is 90 so there may be bleeding internally right so what you would do okay you would activate the moh protocol in this case okay you need blood you do not know at this point of time what is happening with the patient okay even if you do not know it is either a abruption or rupture you have to activate the moh protocol if it is either of these cases you to talked about the baby having problems you talked about you need to uh, needing to do an emergency category 1 cesarean section is what you mentioned isn't it what happens to the mother who is going to look after the mother okay so you need to start the steps so please do not forget all all obstetric emergencies can be dealt with by saying these four steps that is resuscitation communication investigations monitoring and arrest of of the cause all that should happen simultaneously so you need to call for help when you say call for help you you will be marked under communication with colleague that is how the marking system works in part 3 exam okay so all four steps happening simultaneously which is why you need your team okay so communication resuscitation sending investigations arrest all will happen simultaneously so under resuscitation what you would do you would start by saying you can say airway breathing circulation which you have already done in examination pass to wide bow iv cannulae very important iv fluids crystalloids followed by colloids oxygen at 10 to 15 liters per minute blood transfusion that is uh, if you have activated the moh protocol then popine spec cells with ffps with platelets would come uh, lay the patient flat because she is in shock right keep her warm uh, monitor her on a meow chart and monitor her urine output okay communication involve the consult consultant the anesthetist the uh registrar and consultant the blood bank the porter the scriber senior midwife also you can say okay you can send investigations complete blood count renal function test liver function test blood for group and save and clotting profile because again it is either a massive shock or that is rupture uh, hypovolemia or abruption in both the cases you have to send all this uh, uh investigations all these investigations arrest of course you asking me whether the patient is on oxytocin i believe in this state in this room so if she is if the pay, uh, the examiner is not responding don't wait you say if she is on oxytocin i will stop oxytocin okay uh she has to be shifted for a laparotomy either a rupture or if she is not ruptured yet then emergency cesarean section after consent inform the theater staff inform the anesthetist that is what you would do in this particular case they have also given the additional information that she is a, a drown screen positive in this case and uh, amniocentesis is uh, not done so you have no confirmation whether she is actually down or not so there is nothing that changes okay you just have to check whether it is recorded in her uh, findings whether she is counseled that the baby can be down syndrome okay but nothing changes per se right so uh, So that now, is about uh, this unitologist is not required in this case no if it is why uh, why why would you say that uh, because uh, down because down screening was for no 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 never 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 say that you are not disregarding okay. the baby okay and okay. she is not confirmed down she is a uh, high risk for downs doesn't mean she is confirmed down what if the baby turns out normal and you have not called the neonatologist no you have to call the neonatologist when you are shifting her for the cesarean section or a laparotomy whatever okay whatever you doing so inform the anesthetist neonatologist and your theater staff right okay ma'am yeah. 
yeah then the next room let's go to the next urgent room okay now here i told you she's pprm you asked me if she's leaking which is why i confirmed with you if it is room number 10 that you're talking about okay pprm means she's leaking right so uh, and she is preterm 30 weeks pprom there is uh, the, the information that i gave you be uh, temperature of 38.6 uh, pulse of 130 90 by 60 blood pressure all these things go in favor of sepsis and you will not start erythromycin oral for sepsis is that very clear this is how your your management will change depending on the situation erythromycin is started for pprm where you are giving them conservative management when you are suspecting sepsis you will start iv broad spectrum antibiotics very important remember that okay so again here i have in this particular answer as well i have mentioned it under the subheadings of you know similar subheadings like resuscitation communication investigations arrest of the cause you would need not say these in the station but this is for you to organize your thought while you are answering otherwise you will get confused i will send investigations i will take patient for cesarean then you will suddenly realize that there is no bed for uh, baby then you'll say talk about in utero transfer and that is how it becomes all disorganized so it's important to have a set structure in your mind so what you do is in this case what are the steps you would take to resuscitate her first is iv line iv fluids oxygen broad spectrum antibiotics monitoring on the meow shot uh, this is basically the sepsis 6 care bundle that you would do communicate with the anesthetist patient and relative senior midwife consultant of course investigation would be uh, your blood culture lactate levels would have to be sent urine culture vaginal swab uh, complete blood count and renal function test because you are suspecting sepsis so kidney function is also important confirm her fhs confirm uh, uh, do a ctg do a general and obstetric examination rs examination for any uh, distress because she's sepsis then arrest of the cause would be to plan delivery this in this case you will not talk about conservative management this is sepsis so you will have to plan her delivery okay and uh, if there is any other identifiable cause like there is associated say uti okay it may be uti and sepsis or and there is pprm fair enough but you have to deliver the patient you cannot take the risk right so you treat other identifiable causes as well since she is preterm steroids is a is still a controversial thing in sepsis because it can flare the sepsis further but that has to be discussed with the consultant that is the safest bet for you okay whenever there is something controversial say i would discuss with consultant magnesium sulfate would have to be started if you are delivering the patient okay and uh, counsel her very important get the neonatologist on board and counsel her okay so you're informing your consultant anesthetist neonatologist again would count under communication and if the patient is in a stable condition you think in utero transfer is possible for her consider in utero transfer depending on patient's condition if the patient is not stable not in a situation to be transferred you deliver the patient here transfer the baby ex utero understood is that clear dr aisha all right. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. Okay. So, what you need to remember is basically how your management will change depending on whether there are symptoms and signs of sepsis or not. Because PPRM guidelines will tell you erythromycin, but if there is sepsis, the management will change and you need to deliver the patient. You cannot keep the patient. All right. So, that's the thing. Now, the next room is uh, mentioned that she is i think nine centimeter dilated and the ctg is pathological and appears confused when the patient appears confused again uh rule out sepsis rule out embolism dehydration hypoglycemia opioid overdose could be anything it's enough if you say a few of these not say everything but important to say electrolytes would have to be checked uh, hypoglycemia uh, that is blood sugars has to be checked Hypo hypotension so hydrate her Again, in pathological CTG, what uh, we have 
uh, told you to say is basically say things like you would uh, exclude other acute events, cord prolapse, suspected abruption, etc. That would need immediate intervention. Perform a full risk assessment, maternal observation, discuss with the patient and document findings. If it is, I told you that the blood pressure was 90 by 60, you would correct her hypotension in that case. Okay, so uh, basically here you can send your senior midwife as you, as you said, you said midwife, please remember it is not midwife, it is senior midwife. Okay, you can send your senior midwife because as per the NICE guidelines, when the CTG is pathological, it is to be informed to the senior midwife and the consultant. Okay, so your consultant is on the way. Your senior midwife can very well go and review the patient. She will not do a cesarean and she will not do a, a forceps delivery. She's going to review the patient. She's going to correct her hypotension. Patient has to be reviewed. Correct? She has to be attended to on an urgent basis. But the intervention, you have to wait and watch, see how the patient is behaving and then intervene accordingly. So in this case, you can wait for the consultant to arrive. Now, somebody is asking if the time is enough to say all these. This is that is why that is the exact reason why you need to pick out the urgent rooms and talk about the urgent rooms first. OK, because there is lots to say in each of the urgent rooms. OK, rest of the rooms, if like there is there was a case where there is a patient in labor low risk, you can even say I would just start routine intrapartum care for her and get on with the next room. That is all that is required in the rooms that are not urgent. But if you miss out on these safety points, because the safety points are assessed only in these rooms. I mean, there is hardly anything to say in the rooms where there is patient in labor or patient for induction, hardly anything to say, right? So the, there would be typically three rooms that would be urgent. So three rooms do justice to them. Rest, you still, you can finish each of these in two minutes each. Each in two minutes, a very long time for you to say all these points. That is why you need to practice. And that is why it's important to organize your thought in this manner. What are the points I would do in the resuscitation? What are the points under communication? What investigations? What uh, interventions? Think of all those and say it in the, in the station. All right. Uh, then go to your, uh, okay, the rest of the rooms. The first room is semi-urgent because she's come for epidural. She cannot be non-urgent because you have. if she's come for epidural, you have to uh, cater to her need and you have to give her epidural. So here you would ask the anesthetist registrar to see her and uh, she has to be started on epidural. Before epidural, you have to give her uh, start an IV line. It's a must. And uh, inform her about the uh, consequences of epidural that it may you may require more instrumentation and uh, uh, second stage may be prolonged and it reduces mobility. That is all. Enough. It doesn't even take more than uh, 20 seconds. Okay. Then uh, there was this particular room who is having, uh, she's in, v, she's V back and she's in labor. Okay. Here again, you have to ask for the details, any risk factors. Currently, how is she doing? Current complaint, CTG, rule out signs and symptoms of dehiscence. Make sure there's IV line, blood available, consent for V back. Okay, this again, please practice these things because these are the typical rooms that you get in the exam. Okay, be back waiting, then patient waiting for induction, patient waiting for cesarean. These are the non urgent rooms that you get, typical. Okay, then there is another room, room five was the room where you said uh, in early in labor, no high risk factors. You just say routine intrapartum care. If you think you have time, you can say review antenatal uh, records, history, high risk factors, not there. Partogram in established labor, pain relief, support, and check for any current complaints. These are the things in, in labor, okay? Then there is a patient who is basically waiting for cesarean section, that is room number seven, okay? So here you would just say that, uh, check if there are any current concerns. Otherwise, you just apologize for delay, Tell her, check her consent, send her blood for group and save and tell her that it would be, uh, that once the emergencies are taken care of, her cesarean would be done. Okay, then there is a patient, room number eight was a patient with previous um, IUD, and now in this pregnancy, she has previous history of decreased fetal movements, and now she's come for induction at 37 weeks. So here, what you're going to do, you're going to do 
confirm currently whether her baby is moving fine do a ctg pre induction what is to be done in the rooms which are waiting for induction ctg pre induction cervical score uh blood to be sent for group and save i've added this mental health assessment and support just because she's previous iud iud that is all nothing else okay then then the room number 9 was uh, one second let me check what was the room number 9 okay room number 9 is again a patient who is primary and she is having small baby and she is waiting for induction of labor so what you going to do in room number 9 basically you are going to um uh, confirm current baby movements because again she is small review records weight doppler cervical score uh, apologize for the delay and uh, consider induction all right so again in the non urgent rooms if you just say the important points is also enough just say that because they are waiting for induction i would go there after the emergencies are taken care of i would apologize to each of them and then say that i would like if there is say uh sga you would say that i would check the uh, doppler the fetal weight or uh, ctg pre induction and cervical score pre induction and apologize that uh, blood should be sent for group and save all right so this is about the prioritization and since there is if you do have time this is if you do have time since there are other things that you may have not said in each of the rooms it may be important to say certain points in history because information gathering is a domain that is assessed you can do this at the end of the labor ward board you can say that in all the rooms with patients in labor i would like to check the antenatal records because this is something you do in every room so instead of saying it in all rooms you just say i would check the antenatal records inquire about pain frequency measures for pain relief temperature blood pressure vaginal loss do an obstetric examination and things that we ask for in labor medical diseases previous surgeries allergies because you are not going to see allergies in each of the rooms but it is important so allergies bmi blood group reservation to blood transfusion would be assessed in each of the rooms so you can do this if you do have time in the end otherwise another way out is whenever you say a particular drug that you would give a particular drug say you give uh, nifedipine for tocolysis okay you would say after ruling out allergies or antibiotics after ruling out allergies that will cover your safety aspect okay but if you do have time then uh, you can um uh, you can talk about these uh, specific things which are required in all the rooms all right ctg you want to see is what is mentioned so ctg is a prolonged deceleration here sorry and here in the ctg again these are like artifacts so you cannot really make out whether the tone is increased or the or the contractions are ceased etc so again uh, another way of knowing whether this is abruption or or rupture you cannot really make out much on the see of course in rupture it is likely to be the contractions are likely to cease but these are like waves which are there so you cannot really rule out uh rupture okay so this is a prolonged deceleration that you have got here all right so one more station should we should we take then we have uh, okay is there anybody who wants to take the next station Dr Prema will you take the next question uh okay doctor and kitan try Can I have the next slide, please?
Yeah, you can start. Hi, I'm Prima, one of the exam candidate. I'm ready for my structured discussion. I know my yeah, can you Can you prioritize and uh, assign tasks and tell me the immediate management? Okay, fine. Uh, I need to know the special care, but it is not mentioned in the question. Uh, so I need to know whether they are amber, green or red. Um, so my urgent room is room 10. Um, sorry, room 9 and 10, my urgent room. Uh, my semi-urgent is uh, room 1, 2 and um, 4. Non-urgent or routine rooms or induction rooms, room 7, 8 and room 11 okay uh, i'll start with my um i'll go room by room i I'll like uh, i just tell what i want and which staff to go room one um i will send my st2 i want my st2 because she is two risk factors she's jehovah witness and she's a grand multip so i want the st2 to check how did she deliver those five babies whether she has got cannula, full blood count group on safe being sent, whether she has had CPG, observation chart, and whether she has signed Jehovah Witness. And uh, when was the last examination was done for her because it's mentioned early labor. And then uh, how is the CTG doing? Uh, any more information, uh, doctor, in room one? No. Do, do we have any more information? Because it says she's no, in early labor. No, early labor, that's it. Okay, fine. Uh, this is what I want my ST2 to do uh, in room one. Uh, room two, uh, I would send my um, ST1. She's para one. She had, uh, she delivered the, um, uh, the baby and then placenta is um, retined. So I want her to have cannula and full blood count group and save what she had for the third stage and when was this EBL? Because I don't know the time when she delivered. So I want to know when was it, uh, this EBL was measured, estimated blood loss, and whether that is ongoing bleeding. Keep a nil by mouth and um, start a, uh, and take a written consent for manual removal of placenta. Uh, written consent for this lady. This is room two. Um, room four. Um, the midwife who's looking after her can come and update me. She's a para. How did she deliver last baby? Whether because it's been mentioned, no risk factor. And again, I need to know what are the abs, whether uh, observations are, whether she is on intermittent or continuous monitoring. Um, whether this baby's symphysis frontal height was fine. Whether she has got any medical or uh, surgical history in the past. When was the last examination was done? Whether membranes are intact or not? If there is any concerns. I would ask the midwives looking after her to come and let me know. Uh, the other semi-urgent room is room six. Um, she's a teenager. She's only 15 years old. And she's a primary gravida and she's a preterm. So I need to know the status of the um, special cat. If she goes into labor, whether they would accommodate, able to take the baby, or should they need to make uh, ex utero arrangement. So I need to update about this girl to my consultant. Uh, I will look into the notes. I want to know um, whether she has got any medical problem, any surgical problem, uh, whether she has had growth scans, um, how far she is in latent phase, how she is coping with the pain, who is the birth partner for this uh, little baby, whether she has got any safeguard issue. I will ask the midwife, uh, my ship leader, to go and have a um, look at this lady and provide her adequate pain relief. Um, I'll make sure she has got a cannula sighted, full blood count group, and save done. So that is six. Um, room seven, she is para one, previous IUFD, and she's 37 weeks in action. Since there are quite a few activities going on, the midwife looking after her can update me um, what happened in the previous delivery, whether she had any growth scan this pregnancy, when was the last growth scan done, um, and send some bloods like full blood count group and save and put her on the monitor. I want a CTG to be done and um, and explain that is, that is going to be a delay in starting the induction and provide apology and give some reassurance for her. 
and I also need to know how her mental status is. Uh, room eight, um, again, she is para one, she is DM for induction. I need to know what type of diabetic, whether type one or type two, whether she is taking regular insulin, how big the baby is, how did she deliver previous delivery, whether she had any shoulder tissue or previous pregnancy. Then I want a full set of blood, including kidney function test and liver function test and do a CTG monitoring and apology for delay in starting the induction. So room nine is my priority. As I said, it is an urgent room. I will go by myself along with my anesthetic colleague. She's a primary gravida, 37 weeks. She's a severe preeclampsia. Um, I need to um, ask for signs and symptoms like headache, visual disturbance, and epigastric pain. I will send, I'll cite the cannula, I'll send a full blood count group and save LFT, renal function test, urine for PCR. I connected to the monitor. I will ask medical history, surgical history, allergy history. After that, I will give Labitra 200 milligram according to the NICE guideline. Uh, if she is not an asthmatic and recheck the blood pressure in 30 minutes. If it is not coming down, I will activate the PET protocol by giving a high, consider giving her IV Labitra and if there is a clonus and um, brisk reflexes, I would consider starting at magnesium sulfate, four grams over a period of 15 minutes. Then I'll put her on one gram infusion. I'll inform about this lady to my consultant. Um, and uh, once I stabilize the mother, I would assess her doing cervical scoring and decide about which would be the safe way, whether to induce her or having a cesarean suction. Then room 10. Um, it depends upon uh, whether she's bleeding or not. Her blood loss is two liters in 15 minutes. Oh dear. Okay. She is um, um, bleeding disorder. I, If it is two liters, I will go to the room. I introduce myself. I will activate a major obstetric hemorrhage protocol. Uh, I will start doing ABC. I'll call for help. I want my consultant to be present on site, my shift leader my anesthetic colleague, my ST2, and a couple of more midwives, scribe and the porters. I will cite second cannula 14 gauge, take 20 ml of blood for full blood count group and safe cross match, four unit of blood, and uh, I do clotting factors as well. I need to know uh, while I'm doing this, I need to find out what could be the cause for the bleed, whether it is a tone, trauma, thrombin, or I will ask midwife whether the placenta is complete, uh, I'll ask what she had for the third stage. If she had Sinto, I'll consider giving the second dose of Sinto. Then I will ask one of the midwife to go and bring ergometrin 500 micrograms IM. And I will give 40 units Sinto in the rate of 125 per ml. Um, if she doesn't have any asthma, raised blood pressure, I would consider giving her carboprast. Uh, while simultaneously, I will put a catheter, do a bimanual compression uh, and once I started giving him a bait, I would consider taking it to theater. I want a theater team to, to be standby uh, for EUA, uh, plus or minus battery balloon, plus or minus laparotomy and hysterectomy. I would take a rest and consent. Uh, I, will, um, I will activate the MOH for this lady. Um, room 11 is semi-urgent. Uh, she is a previous to cesarean, waiting for elective sections. I wanted the midwife, uh, midwife looking after her to provide apology. Sorry, I would send my ST1 once she finished seeing room 2 to room 11 uh, to make sure um, to look at the previous two cesarean, any, any complication, the two cesarean section, full blood count group and save, nil by mouth, uh, whether she had any extra scan in this pregnancy and check the consent, uh, return consent for her. Um, and apologize to her there is going to be a delay because there is a major obstetric hemorrhage going in the labor ward. Uh, so to summarize, um, my urgent room is room 9 and room 10. Since she's room 10 is bleeding, she will priority, she will take over the room 9. My semi-urgent is uh, room 1, 2. So who is going where? To summarize, uh, who is going to which room? Okay, fine. Uh, room 10, I take the whole team, including myself. Uh, room nine, I said I will go because obstetrician need, because she's a preeclampsia along with the anesthetics. Uh, room one, I would send my ST2. And room two, I would send my ST1. And um, 
room four, the midwife looking after her can continue. Again, room six, midwife looking after her can continue. And um, okay. room seven, again, it's an induction, the same midwife. And uh, room eight, um, I will send my shift leader. And room nine, 11, again, mid midwife who's looking after her can apologize to the patient. All right. Okay. Any reflection, doctor? Uh, do you have any reflection? I think, um, Dr. Ankita, this I did this with you in my class as well, I think. Okay, fine. Good. Okay, you did well. And uh, yes, as I mentioned to you, you can do room by room or you can pick out the, since you have picked out the uh, urgent rooms, uh, you can go ahead and do the urgent rooms first as well, or you can do room by room, but then you have to make sure that you finish the urgent rooms. You did a fair job. But what I would like to tell you is that here you knew the agenda. Okay, isn't it? Because you knew that there was a von Willebrand uh, yeah. disease uh, patient yeah. who is going to be uh, going to be yeah. bleeding. And you yeah. knew that it is heavy bleeding. Okay, you may not know in the exam. There may be some other uh, agenda. Yeah totally yeah. different okay so what you should actually or ideally do is ask in the beginning before you start uh, since this patient is delivered now and she has a bleeding risk what is the blood loss so okay then you can say that yes this is my urgent room otherwise you cannot just look at the, this picture and say yeah. urgent room because you do not know that she's having a heavy bleeding okay yeah. it's a different thing that it's an exam uh, scenario or it has such things have repeated in the past and um, I mean that you know it already. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So now uh, as far as uh, the prioritization is concerned, that was uh, it was fair. You said, see, um, you can send your uh, ST2, there is ST2, ST1, you and the senior midwife here. Okay. The midwives can go to the induction rooms. The senior midwife okay. is a senior person. Yeah. So uh, you have to allot a room that has, uh, that is urgent, kind of urgent to the senior midwife as well. Okay. okay. You can yeah. send the senior midwife in this case in the room number two, because it may not be that urgent, but it is not not urgent. It is still okay. patient yeah. is bleeding, cord has snapped. Yeah. Okay. So you can send your senior midwife there. Okay. ST, uh, the room number nine where the blood pressure is high, you can send yeah. your ST2, okay, okay, because that is the next person you have. Yeah. Uh, consultant is not mentioned, is there, not there. So consultant can come. Is Consultant yeah. is always there. So if it is not specifically mentioned that this is not there, I mean, uh, that uh, the consultant, nothing is mentioned, you can always say, I would call the consultant because consultant is always there that way, okay? okay. So you can ask the consultant to review that patient with ST2, okay? And okay. you, you as an ST5 should go to the yeah. patient that requires most urgent okay. attention because you are available okay. there. Yeah. If the consultant is mentioned is available right there, you can ask the consultant to see the patient with PPH. But yeah. that patient cannot be ignored. That patient has to be seen either by you or by the consultant. consultant. Okay. That is how it is. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. uh, this is how you can. Okay. And go about uh, uh, distributing your P. First, know which are the people that you would you have in hand who yeah. are capable of handling emergencies. Yeah. So you have yourself. You yeah. consultant is not mentioned in the in the question. So consultant, and you have uh, your uh, senior midwife. These are the three people who are capable of managing emergencies. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't say senior midwife is capable of managing uh, things like cesarean or forceps, but Emergency situations, definitely. Okay, okay. like a resuscitating, yes. Anesthetist yeah. will not go to the room. I've told you before also. PET yeah, yeah, yeah. is your domain, is the obstetrician's yeah. domain. Okay, yeah. anesthetist will go, in fact, to the patient who is bleeding where you require resuscitation. Yeah. Understood? So anesthetist would go there with yeah. you, ST5 and the anesthetist registrar. In a while, if the patient with a cord snapped requires MROP, then you yeah. would require anesthetist in the theater, but then you can call the anesthetist consultant who's also always available. And so you have your two anesthetists available that way. Okay, but yeah. you would uh, go to room number 10, 
and you will have your anesthetist with you and other midwives who are whoever is there you can have your senior midwife can go to room 2 your st2 can go to room 9 in the meantime your consultant can review the patient in room 9 by which the st2 is is seeing urge on an urgent basis okay yeah so um uh room number 10 15 so 15 year old is there any ha huh, i'll come to that Oh. yeah you have to oh. see you have to go to her as well you have to that way yeah, you have yeah. to go to all the patients yeah. but for now for now you can send a midwife there or yeah. you can send your st st1 is to junior okay yeah. so you can send midwife or st1 depends on um depends on the emergencies so now uh and you can say that later on you would want to review her that you can say okay because she is somebody who would require attention now uh, as far as the room number 10 this is a typical obstetric emergency asked in any labor ward station so in a, in a, you would typically have pph as one of the one of the rooms so again okay please say activate moh protocol and say these steps they are given in the guidelines so please say these steps resuscitation communication investigation and arrest of bleeding simultaneously to be done and then when you say resuscitation say all these steps which we have already covered in the previous stage okay which was antenatal antepartum hemorrhage this is postpartum hemorrhage the same thing it's major obstetric hemorrhage okay so airway breathing circulation iv fluid iv uh, crystalloids iv lines two iv lines um catheterize empty the bladder okay uh, informing consultant blood bank hematologist anesthetist porter scriber send blood investigations uh, coagulation profile is important in this case is von willebrand disease particularly in this case even otherwise it is important when you say arrest in a patient who is bleeding from the uterus the first step is uterine massage please don't forget that uterine massage empty the bladder first steps okay oxytocin oxytocin methargin carboprost mesoprostol can go in that order examine to rule out traumatic cause of pph okay in addition because she is von willebrand disease you would say i would like to check factor levels consult the hematologist which you have said in the communication part and consider factor replacement consider tranexamic acid because she is von willebrand disease this is additional how it is different from other pph okay so these steps please what you do is you need to practice saying these four things uh, like a parrot okay it has to be that way right so you will have one or the other station on this particular topic so it's important okay you, that for that matter all the obstetric emergencies can be subdivided into these four categories you may not say in other obstetric emergencies but in this case since it is given in the guideline these four steps you say that i will start these four steps simultaneously and say all the four components okay then the next uh, room was a pet okay so when the bp is given as 180 100 now no other factor is given nothing else is given do not assume it is preeclampsia it can be chronic hypertension it can be preeclampsia it can be gestational hypertension it can be anything okay so first what you need to do is anyway the same uh, same thing so first you have to check the ctg you have to uh, i mean first you have to check her bp recheck her bp check her ctg do a general examination check for pallor uh, rs examination pulse blood pressure again obstetric examination cervical score urine proteins to make sure it is uh, preeclampsia or not send investigations complete blood count renal function test liver function test clotting profile and group and save okay this is required for pet iv line has to be established as you rightly said nice guidelines mention stab labetal or 200 mg to be repeated after half an hour if there is no response and uh, if there is still no response iv labetal or after ruling out allergy asthma you said that good magnesium sulfate uh, has to be checked whether you need to start her on magnesium sulfate or not for prophylaxis of eclampsia arrange for delivery inform the consultant in this room you want a consultant to join so you inform the consultant and take a consent for delivery the delivery decision would depend on the decision of the consultant along with the patient okay 
so that is what you don't need to do in this particular room then there is uh, the next urgent room i would say is the cord snap patient i have put it as urgent because although you said i don't know when the delivery has happened uh, when the uh, delivery occurred and uh, blood loss when it has occurred you do not know but you know that the cord the placenta is still inside so with the placenta being inside the blood loss is already 350 normally you have the blood loss in normal delivery after the placenta is delivered isn't it okay but here already the blood loss is 350 ml that means you need to deliver the placenta on an urgent basis isn't it so you can say that in the exam you can justify why you thinking this is urgent because the placenta is in c2 and and the blood loss is already 350 ml the cord has snapped so i want to look into this patient on an urgent basis i would like to do uh, i would like to take a history examination look for active bleeding do our observations resuscitation iv line blood for grouping and cross matching uh, oxytocin in pint because nice guidelines clearly states that for retained placenta or whatever uh, injecting in the cord does not help the only thing that helps is oxytocin in pint if she's bleeding actively okay you have to consider the possibility of adherent placenta as well because it's not if it's not coming out shift to the theater for which is why you have to shift to the theater for mrop because it can be adherent and if you do it in labor room she can have a vasovagal shock and anal analgesia or anesthesia may be uh, minimal or not to the to that extent that and she may have uh, she may go in shock that is why you need to shift her to the theater is uh, somebody is having uh, everyone please mute yourself okay fine so then hmm, uh, antibiotics again after checking allergies inform the anesthetist inform the theater informing when you say inform this one inform that one that is counted under communication with colleague. Whenever there is a baby, inform the neonatologist. Okay, that much you have to remember. All right. Rest of the rooms were not urgent. Okay. The Jehovah's Witness is you just have to explain the risk of PPH. You have to tell her that blood transfusion may be life saving. You have to check her advanced directive, check her hemoglobin, uh, what blood components he, she has a reservation for, NTD if she has a reservation for. Confirm that she is not taking this decision under any duress, that is under any influence and a pressure, uh, that she can change the decision at any point of time. You have to make arrangements for active management of third stage of labor that is recommended for her, lies with your IOCS and uh, interventional radiology. Okay, so uh, that is what you need to do. So uh, basically, if there is no such facility in your in your center, you have to shift the patient elsewhere where there is IOCS and interventional radiology. Uh, rest of the things are routine. Uh, the patient who is in labor, no risk factors, as we have already seen, routine intrapartum care. Even if you don't have time, you just say routine intrapartum care is enough. If you have time, you say you elaborate. Look for current complaints, support, pain relief, partograph, vaginal loss, observations. That is what is needed in labor. Room number six is the child in labor, is a 15 year old in labor. So here you would say support. You'd go through a history, a records, check if there are any obstetric risk factors, any reported sexual abuse, child safeguarding services may have to be involved. Uh, pain is particularly important because she's just 15. Uh, counseling, pelvic assessment, again, because she's 15. <coughs> Counsel about, she's 36 weeks. So counsel about prematurity, neonatologist to be informed. Okay, so this is what you would do in this particular room. Then there is the next room where a um, patient is waiting for uh, induction of labor. Okay, that's that, right? Yeah, previous uh, IUD. Again, here, the same thing, which we have already discussed. So you have to just check uh, her. Before induction, what do we do normally? Send blood for group and safe. Do a per vaginal examination for cervical score. Uh, do a CTG prior to induction. Here, in addition, you may have to check her mental health, mental status, because she's had a previous IUD, support, and apologize for the delay. The diabetes patient, you'll have to check whether she's on, on insulin or OHS. If she's on insulin, you omit the insulin dose in the morning. You uh, check her blood sugars, check her uh, scan and uh, how big the baby is, and then accordingly, 
same thing again uh, per abdomen examination per vaginal examination cervical score uh, send group blood for group and save and you may have to you can start the induction because she's diabetic or you can uh, plan it a little later once the emergencies are taken care of the previous two scars which is the last room she's waiting for elective lscs so again here what you would do the midwife would go you would check the consent whether she signed the consent whether um, your blood is kept group and safe and um, apologize for delay that this patient unless there are urgent uh, un urgent indication urgent uh, certain concerns or complaints currently you can take her at a uh, later time after the emergencies are taken care of okay is that clear <coughs> yes dr ankita thank you all right fine so uh, with that i hope uh, labor ward is a little more clear because uh, it is a difficult task to do in the exam what you need to do is you need to imagine yourself in that it is it is really important that you are currently working in labor rooms so it you need to imagine yourself in that particular situation and then accordingly do your tasks and follow these steps read well check the domains check your team and prioritize okay see which rooms are urgent okay and uh, yeah ma'am i have a question uh, yeah. yes and uh, yeah ma'am i just wanted uh, if you could please elaborate the domains of uh, anesthetic registrar like where uh, which uh, anesthetic registrar you would need only for your uh, whenever you are shifting a patient for ot you would need the anesthetic registrar when you are giving epidural you would need anesthetic registrar when you are resuscitating a patient like a hypotension patient it's basically what anesthesia does for you you may also need the patient the anesthetic registrar in case of severe uh, disease that is multi system like pre eclampsia sepsis okay but if there is a surgery that is uh, needed urgently you would take your anesthetic registrar with you for the surgery okay so for the anesthesia purpose that's all okay ma'am thank you <clears throat> okay so there is there are some more questions here is is the room number 2 having epidural that is not mentioned not really important you can take her to the theater and uh, give her epidural and if any cesarean section is planned to inform blood bank and group and save yes you have to group and save for any planned cesarean if it is a high risk for bleeding you have to cross match as well all right doctor okay ankita, guys for the von will brand yes uh, doctor ankita tell me tell me for the von yeah, yeah. brand treatment should we uh, should we also check about the factor level and if she needs any yes, the compression or factor infusion okay. yes i mentioned that yeah you need to check the factors and uh, possibly give her factor desmopressin right now when she is bleeding may not help you may have to give her factor levels right all right okay and ankita uh, the patient uh, who is cardiac and uh, she is fully dilated from the last one hour and she is occipital posterior position so that was one of yeah. the scenario so what we have yeah. to say kindly please tell you have to occipital posterior position in any case if you want to deliver her and you don't want her to strain you have to shift her to the theater and attempt an instrument maybe a vacuum and keep arrangements ready for a cesarean section okay because it's occipital posterior you cannot do it in the labor room it's a difficult uh, instrumentation so shift her to the theater at the same time you say that you would involve your cardiologist your consultant has to be informed about this case and intensivist that is the anesthetist the intensivist and keep an hdu make sure that a hdu bed or an icu bed is available for her okay thank you ma'am okay okay good night guys and please practice keep practicing